friends and family. Welcome to Sicily Verdani, your home for spiritual insight and entertainment. My name is Courtney of Sicily Verdani. Today we're going to find out how men view you, what men think about you. You can watch with a specific person in mind or you can open up to a broader message of what men in general think and feel about you. Go ahead and choose from your three options. Pile number one, parental care. Pile number two, hobbies. Pile number three, end of an era. Make sure you're subscribed so you won't miss out on future juicy readings such as this. And let's get started. Hi, Pile One. If you chose parental care from the Butterfly Oracle deck, here's your message about what men think of you, how men view you. All right. So while I was shuffling to get your initial card, what was coming through is that you might be a little bit like me. You might be apprehensive about even asking that question because it's like, okay, well, should I really be defining my sense of self by how men view me? No, that's not like me. That, that might be your thought process, which I totally understand. Um, but also there may be another part of you. So I see you being kind of dynamic. You can hold nuance you are you maybe have a libran quality about you and a very caring uh nature about you men might see this about you right so it's like you look at both sides because whereas maybe you think okay well i know i shouldn't get my sense of self-worth from perceptions of others especially perceptions of the opposite sex, I do think that there's value in understanding how you show up and how you're perceived, especially if you're someone who appreciates being part of a pair or wants to attract men in your life. So you may be able to hold both of those polarities and kind of discern information. So you're not clicking on this reading to like take it all in and as, as law, but you're going to listen, you're gonna take what resonates, you're gonna leave what doesn't, like you're really skilled at doing that. So men see you as having a really balanced perspective, a really uh, clear and independent thought process um, I'm really getting this Libran quality about you, but also a little bit of Virgo energy. With parental care, uh, I feel like you, you have a big heart, but you also have a clear mind. Like you, you have really good insight. Um, you're very gracious. You're very humble. And men see this about you. All these things I'm saying, these are things that men see as well. They see that you have this sense of discipline and boundaries that helps you to be really uh, successful, also very active and, and have a lot of energy and kind of uh, put your hands in a lot of things. So I'm getting air sign energy in general, Gemini could be, but um, it's like you're able to do a lot of things for a lot of people and have an abundance of love to still give. But you've learned, and it may be, there may be an innate part of you, but you've also had to like cultivate your boundaries in such a way that helps you to show up more and more and more in all areas of your life. So they see you have a lot of self-respect and that you're not just going to like capitulate for the sake of being in a relationship, but you do have the ability to be harmonious and be balanced. 
in mind and heart. And it's not an emotional heart energy. It's more of a caring, nurturing heart energy. You're extremely nurturing. And so your the way that you analyze life and situations and the way you discern your discernment process, it's a lot about like your being mindful of others. So it's that, that Libra balance. Cool. Let's get into the tarot. I love that. What is, how do men view pile number one? How do men view my pile number ones? How do men view my pile number ones? How do men view my pile number ones? Ace of pentacles. How do men view my pile number ones? How do men view, one card at a time, please. How do men view pile number one? Seven of cups. How do men view pile number one and page of pentacles? They see you have a lot of options and you have your hands in a lot of things. Please clarify Ace of Pentacles. So maybe you're multi-talented, very multi-dimensional person, getting that sense of nuance to begin with. So you have the capacity for nuance, but you're also grounded. And they see you as being very wealthy, like ambidextrous. It's more so like, um, thrifty and wise with money and like you're good with money and you have this like business acumen or this like acumen when it comes to acquiring like wealth but they they see you as being pretty young even still please clarify ace of pentacles so it's like you're at the beginning of that wealth building process please clarify ace of pentacles but you have a lot of potential please clarify seven of cups Please clarify Seven of Cups. Please clarify Page of Pentacles. So they see that sometimes like you have so many talents, so many skills, so many options that you may get lost in the sauce of, of life. And sometimes it's hard for you to understand where to put your energy. Some of you may identify with being like neurodivergent or having ADHD, or it's just that within yourself, there's such a vast array of like of insight. So sometimes it's difficult to choose one path or choose one way of seeing things. And there's always that balance of give and take and understanding yourself versus others, understanding when boundaries are healthy or when they're like too much, where to give, where to, where to, you know, receive or stand your ground. So, um, but also since you're multifaceted, it's like where to go, what to do. But they see like the world is really your oyster. And sometimes you don't realize that because you get stuck in, in your um, heart center and, and it keeps you from taking action in the material world. But that it's okay because whenever you get going, things really go in your favor. They see you as being really, it's not, it is luck, but it's not just luck. It's this skill. And a lot of it comes from the heart chakra. It comes from this caring energy. It's like you're blessed with so much skill and talent and insight because you have such a good heart. And they, they recognize that about you. And here's that justice card because I was getting the Libra energy, which is about the scales. And I think this is uh, a Libra card in, in tarot. And they see that even though sometimes you get lost or like you tend to not necessarily I'm getting take things for granted because they feel like you take things for granted 
because you have so many options available to you but they realize that it's because you have a really good heart but it's like they still see it as you know like if I had all those skills if I had all that talent um, if I had all those opportunities and options, if I was that beautiful, because I'm seeing like they, they find you very beautiful as well. And they think that that also helps you um, in life. But that's not like your main like that's not all you have going for you in the slightest. It's kind of just a compliment to what you have going on. But they're like, if I had that, I would be doing this and that and the other and they would just do it differently, but they realize in the end, they're not you. And the reason why you're blessed with all this is because you deserve it, because you have a good heart, because you're going to use your discernment when it comes to how you take advantage of or how you utilize your gifts. Hmm, anything else here? But yeah, I think that when they first meet you or the men who are in like kind of their lower, like more shadow self, um, who aren't willing to like open up to the, to more nuance or who aren't willing to see you clearly because of their own stuff. Sometimes they can project onto you that you're lazy and that you take things for granted and that everything comes easy to you. So yeah, I do pick up on some of that shadow element of, of their projections. And you know, in this reading being a lot about multi-dimension, but multi-dimensionality, whatever, however you say that, you know, there, we all have our shadow self and we all have our, our higher self. And Sometimes we can be in our shadow self. And so sometimes we can be um, not seeing the forest for the trees, as they say. We can be kind of taking things for granted or get stuck in kind of negativity. But ultimately, I see that there is like a higher purpose to the times when you're, you have kind of two, you know, the shadow side of feeling stuck, but you also have the higher vibrational side of uh, being in this mode of patience and knowing you've planted your seeds and that they're coming in. And so like doing your manifestation work or meditating, taking care of your inner world because you know your inner world is what manifests your outer world or that they reflect one another. So you know how important it is to tend to your inner garden. So there, there are the times when you're doing that, but there are also the times when you get stuck in like not knowing which way to go, um, feeling overwhelmed, but it's not laziness. It's this overwhelmed feeling and it, it can draw some negative emotions and not really recognizing like all the all that you do have to, at your disposal because you're stuck in like too much information too many feelings and you don't necessarily know which way to go and so men who are in a pot in a positive light they really just want to help you they want things to go your way they want you to be able to like manifest your talents and capabilities and so they want to help give you that direction that you need to really get started because they know that once you get started once you get going you cannot fail and you know you're just going to take off all right what a lovely message so i'm just gonna get a, an advice card to close your message pile number one so this is you have in your mind whatever you want advice on in your life and i'll go ahead and read accordingly what is the advice for my pile number one so wow that came out really quickly says root yourself and grow lie down on a patch of grass and feel the energy of the planet flowing through you renewing every cell in your body and healing you 
Know with every fiber of your being that this is happening. Devote a little time every day to daydreaming about all the developments that you want to happen in your relationships. Keep your thoughts positive, constructive, and joyful. Trust that whatever you're dreaming about will soon manifest in your life. So the main thing I'm getting is to, uh, these are the energies I'm comparing um, of the shadow and then the, the higher self. So whenever you don't know which way to go, whenever uh, you feel at a standstill, because sometimes we need to just be still, instead of being in a negative energy, be in an energy of planting seeds because you will reap what you sow. And whenever you feel like a lack of motivation or inspiration because you're overwhelmed, it's a time to, for one, many of you be out in nature to root yourself, eat earthy foods, and to activate your energy in such a way. So get those wheels turning and know that you are not a victim to your circumstances. You're not a victim to your mind. You're not a victim to the trajectory that things are on, but rather you are a co-creator. So you can affect the energy of the world around you by your mind. So whatever your process is of activating your mind and your energy, whether that's singing, whether that's yoga, whether that's taking a walk, whether that's cooking and eating healthy foods, get yourself in a, a positive frame of waiting and patience and really allow yourself to envision the highest possible trajectory of things. So maybe it's it's not always time to take action. Sometimes it's time to wait. And when you're waiting, be anticipating the highest good. And it's not going to go as planned because you're a co-creator. You're not just doing it all on your own. There are all the other elements you are working together with, and you know that better than anyone. But in that ability to be harmonious and to be balanced, be a positive influence on the energy, and you will only see yourself grow, and the resources in your life grow, your confidence grow, your relationships grow, and you will only attract your highest good, even if it's not how you would have envisioned it to a T. So that's what I have for you, my pound number ones. Thank you so much for joining me. Be sure to click a like if you resonated with that video. Comment, let me know what you thought, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel to receive more content such as this. I will see you all next time. Bye! Hi Pile 2! If you chose hobbies from my Butterfly Oracle deck, here's your message about how men view you, what men think of you. Alright, so I'm getting similar colors to the first reading, but I'm getting a completely different message here. The first reading was a lot more about that person being kind of in flow and a very relationship, relational kind of person. Whereas for your pile, I'm seeing that the focus in your life may be a lot more on stepping into a more individualistic state of being. So the things that I'm picking up are also going to be in alignment with how men are viewing you at this time. So men are viewing you as someone who may be a lot like pile one in that you're a very multi-dimensional personality. You have a lot of uh, skills and talents and maybe even hobbies and you're a very caring person. Your mind is a little, is very creative. You, you have a very creative mind and you have healthy boundaries. So you're in this, men see you in this time of your life where you're kind of 
self-focused, but not just focused on yourself. You're also focused on creating things. They see that you're a caring person. They see that the things that you create or the things that you do, um, they are service oriented. But where in pile one, I was getting more of a relational energy. Pile number two, I'm getting a more like a, you help people like from afar. So a more kind of 11th house Aquarian, Sagittarian, like big picture humanitarian kind of energy. So they see you as ve being very humanitarian and maybe you have a lot of ideas or a lot of uh, creative outlets that help you to add some kind of service to the collective. So even something like reading tarot online or making pottery that is, you know, has a message, some kind of advocacy or artwork, um, or maybe, you know, you're multi multifaceted, like you, you know, are in some kind of science profession and you work for the city, you know, just different things like that. Um, but they see that you have your hands in a lot of different things when it comes to that. What else? But also there's this big push for you to get into that energy. So I feel like men really feel proud of you and they want to encourage you to apply your talents to something grand. They don't feel that same kind of possessive nature over you. They, they respect you as your own free agent, I see with this pile. All right, let's get into the tarot. How do men perceive and view my pile number twos? How do men view, feel, perceive my pile number twos? How do men view my pile number twos? Please clarify Four of Cups. Please clarify the Chariot. Please clarify the Chariot. So I'm already getting, men don't wanna get in your way. They feel like you, you have a mission in life. You're constantly on a mission. Please clarify Knight of Swords. Um, and that sometimes when they require your energy, it's almost like that's just not where you're meant to put your energy and they kind of feel that and they kind of respect that. Um, but I think some men are just feeling a little bit like insecure. So maybe they feel like you're a bit unapproachable, but in reality, you're very like caring and they they realize that once you they might you may not give everybody a chance to get kind of in that um to get close to you but they realize that you're really kind and considerate and very like easy to talk to but they do feel like there's still kind of like some kind of boundary between the two of you and I don't know if it's coming from you or coming from them but I think they kind of chalk it up to the fact that you already have like such a happy life and you have a lot of love to give and and you're you're sharing it in a very like you have happy home life you have family you are giving of yourself in a big way in your life and and you don't necessarily have the energy to to get too close to them. They see you as being very capable and confident and really balanced in your masculine and feminine energy. They would love to get more 
they feel like you keep your feminine energy hidden away and you kind of, you only designate it to those that are really close to you. They wish they could get closer, but they understand why they can't. So for some of you, you're like, I'm not that busy. Like I, I'm like, I'm not trying to be unapproachable. And I think it's just, it could be like in your energy, like you're being guided to really put your efforts into developing yourself, your talents, your skills, um, because you have a, gr a higher love to give that can't just be designated to like one person in one relationship but they see you really being in your purpose and they see you as being very spontaneous and a very fiery personality. I'm getting big Aquarius and uh, Sagittarius vibes. Could be, doesn't have to be, but yeah, really passionate, confident and protected. And it's like, it's not like you, you know, they see boundaries as being something that comes naturally to you because you're you're already confident. But the kinds of guys, the kinds of men who are, I'm picking up on, they're like you attract good, genuinely good guys, but also they might not be, they might not feel as like powerful compared to you but they're not really concerned with that. So maybe men, they see you polarized in your masculine energy, but they feel like it's only this like phase of your life. Like you're in that phase of your life where you're building yourself up in the material world and creating a name for yourself and, and that kind of thing. And it's not really about like resources. It's more so about like, advocacy, humanitarianism, um, being a reliable member of your society, of your company, of your community at large. And they really see that you can do anything that you set your mind to. Hmm. Yeah, the whole package. Wow, that was really positive. So what is my advice? Anything that you have on your mind or your heart, we're just gonna pull um, a card or two about for advice about that. So what is the advice for my pile number two? What is the advice for my pile number twos? energize and take note. Don't focus on any pain, discomfort, or ill health that you're experiencing. Focus instead on being well. Always think of yourself as being completely happy, full of energy, at ease with yourself, and in vibrant health. And then I have take note. Turn an attractive book into your gratitude journal. Record all the daily incidents, no matter how minor, for which you're grateful or which show you're attracting more abundance in your life. The more you write, the more wonderful experiences you'll attract. So the advice for you, which I feel like is already the energy that you're in, is to move full steam ahead. This is how you're being seen. And I think this is the energy that you're in, but I think you don't always necessarily see yourself that way because I, I feel like you're really busy pile number two. And sometimes you're confident, but it's so demure, you know? It's like, <laughs> it's sorry. It's, it's this confidence that's just, in, inherent within you, but it doesn't mean that you don't get self-doubt. So this is just an extra bit of encouragement to remind you of who you are and to encourage you 
to take those extra steps to remind yourself on the daily of who you are and how much power you have to create those things and to remember that the engine power behind your action, behind your goals is that heart energy, is that humanitarian nature. So never forget that because that's what, what uh, grows the fruit and the flowers in your life to fruition is that heart energy, that humanitarian focus. So never lose sight of that when you're going after your goals. And to allow that to inspire your manifestation, your, uh, your daydreams, your intentions. And to know that whenever you feel like you're caught up in the details of life or the burdens of life, it's because all you need to do is recalibrate back to that heart energy and understand the power of that comes from something higher. Those dreams and goals are put into your heart because you have the power to affect positive change. And writing down your gratitude journal, writing down the messages of your heart helps you to be in that energy. All right, something feels incomplete about this message pile too, so I'm just gonna get one more message here from the tarot. How do men view my pile number twos? 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 One card at a time, please. How do men view my pile twos? Yeah, they really view you in your masculine energy. So the, the only message here is if you're trying to attract um, masculine energy, I think it aligns with these messages here. I think it's, for one, it's not necessarily like your central focus or the central focus of your life. Like, as in life is not drawing you towards attracting men into your life at this time. However, if you feel like you want more masculine energy in your life, to come back to that feminine energy from the heart space and allow your nurturing spirit to shine through when you find the particular the particular people that you're interested in. Otherwise, you're doing everything right. And it's a matter of timing when it comes to attracting masculine energy into your life because you have a bigger purpose than just that, especially at this time. Any other messages? Final messages for my pile number two. Final messages for my pile number two. Final messages for my pile number two. How do men view my pile two? Final messages. One card at a time, please. Final message for my pile two. Yeah, so it's like that energize. Get into that youthful spirit. What? What gives you energy? You'll find that you get your energy from a more feminine place. And then you're able to translate that into masculine energy or translate that into go, 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 power forward. Um, so it's like get down to the heart of 
that feminine aspect of yourself and nurture and nourish that because that is the generator of your spirit and that is what attracts both what you want, what you have, and what you're meant to manifest into the future. That feels right. Thank you so much, my pile number twos. Um, hope was at the bottom of the deck. Concentrate on joy, not sorrow. On smiles, not frowns. On forgiveness, not resentment. On empathy, not lack of understanding. On love, not hate. The results will be breathtaking. Yeah, do not allow any hindrances in the past, in relationships, from anywhere to block your heart center because that's where your blessings bloom from and have hope about all the things that you want to manifest because they are there for you. Just stay present to it. Stay grateful for it. And I will see y'all next time. Thank you. Bye. Oh, also don't forget to like this if it resonated, comment, subscribe, let me know how it impacted you and I'll see y'all next time. Hi Pile 3, if you chose End of an Era for how men view you, how men think and feel about you, here is your reading. So first thing I get here is a lot of sacral energy. I feel like men view you as someone who is very attractive, very sexually attractive, very feminine, very pure. You're caring, but they see you as very, there's this youthful energy to you. And so all of those like traditional, like feminine attributes, and the things that make us evolutionarily attractive to men as women. I feel like men feel that from you. But there's also this sweet kind of gentle and pure aspect of it. It's not like purely sexual in nature. Men view you as small, something that needs to be protected and nurtured. Maybe sometimes men can, so it doesn't have to just be like romantic interests, but men in general can infantilize you. So maybe they see you as something that really needs protecting and they don't necessarily, it's not that they don't see you as being capable, it's just, they view you the way you view a child in that you have to kind of do things for them, even though they may feel like they're capable, it's for their highest interest if you step in and help them out sometimes. And they see you as, as someone or something that needs to be nurtured. All right, let's get into the... Hello. How do men view, one card at a time, please. Well, I mean, that was one card, but. How do men view my pile number threes? How do men view my pile number threes? How do men view, one card at a time, please. How do men view my pile number three? Wow, one card at a time, please. How do men, I'm not really liking the energy I'm picking up, to be honest, pile three. How do men view my pile number threes? And I'm also not getting that it's like something that is your, like, really in your control or your fault. I think it's something that, like, obviously it's not your fault how if people perceive you in a negative light in the first place, but I really see that. There's nothing that, there's no quality that you have that are making men feel this way. It's almost like this energetic reaction. How do men view my pile number three? How do men view my pile number threes? How do men, mm, how do men view my pile number threes? How do men view my pile number threes? Please clarify the wheel. Please clarify the wheel. So for a lot of you, I think men feel like you've 
had a hard time. Like maybe you haven't been protected the way you needed to in the past. Maybe you still are really young, but when you were younger, you maybe men view you as like you didn't have like the best or the easiest childhood and they really want to nurture you and help you to heal that uh please clarify the wheel please clarify the wheel how do men view my pile number three but they're really really like attracted to you so you might like attract these like want to be like hero type of guys please clar clarify three of swords but it's like it's this innate feeling they have that they want to be this like hero archetype in your life, but it's not sustainable and it's not like grounded. So you might be young and you might be attracting like younger men because I feel like this energy that I'm getting is not very like well thought out or experienced. It's kind of just purely passion based. Please clarify the three of swords. How do men view my pile number threes? Please clarify the Three of Swords. Two of Pentacles. Please clarify Five of Cups. They may feel like you're kind of a heartbreaker. Please clarify Five of Cups. One card at a time, please. Please clarify Five of Cups. They feel like maybe your heart has been broken, so you don't really necessarily have the capacity to kind of settle down and commit, or maybe that's how they feel about you, the kinds of men that are, that are coming through. Please clarify the Five of Swords. Please clarify, I mean, Five of Cups. Please clarify the Five of Cups. How do men view? But they see that you actually, in reality, you don't need them to save you. So maybe they feel like let down because they really wanted to be that, that one in your life to come and make everything better. But they realize that like, that's kind of just a fantasy and an illusion because you're kind of all good on your own in the end and you have your own process of healing and you go off into your cocoon and then you do your own thing so they are really curious and and drawn towards you and attracted to you because they're like how can something so precious and so delicate be so strong and self-sufficient and it kind of drives them crazy <laughs> i'm getting for you pile number three and so for that reason, they project onto you that you're some kind of heartbreaker. They almost feel like this really primal energy towards you. But in reality, you're just living your life. You're just chilling, hibernating for the winter. Like you're just, you know, like, enjoying the seasons of your life enjoying the going with the flow i get the sense that you know you may not have had the easiest go at things and sometimes that can be why we like maybe they infantilize you because you have a uh, childlike nature to you because sometimes when we have to grow up fast and take on more responsibility as kids sometimes we want to feel like kids when we're adults so we we tend to you know want to take more time without responsibility when we're an adult and if we do that in a healthy way there's no problem with that and i see you you do do that in a healthy way you take care of your business and then you make time to play and you may just have a youthful look to you but i don't think you're like that that young but you might be young but it's like you're young and capable and you've moved through those difficulties on your own and in your own way, very quickly and very easily. And you're kind of protective of yourself. Cause you just want your peace. Like 
You just want to chill. You just want to enjoy you. And men are seeing that about you. But maybe in the past you've tried to depend on men, but it's just always, it's just never been quite right. And you're realizing more and more that it's okay to be independent, to be in your own energy. And that's just the trajectory your life has gone and it's just become that you are so much more safe and secure and just genuinely happy with your alone time and men see that about you how do men view my pile of number threes they feel like you take really good care of yourself you're healthy, you rest, you exercise, you, you know, buy the clothes that you like, you wear the makeup that you like, you eat healthy. They feel like you're, yeah, a very healthy person. And for a lot of them, you may be, you may come from like a different background than the kinds of men who are attracted to you. So, you know, you could like live in another country from where you were born or another like region um or you're just kind of different from what they're used to culturally um men feel like you have a really um beautiful physique as well they find you very very attractive the first two piles were a lot more about personality and qualities of that nature, ambition. This one's a lot about your your looks and your femininity. And they may project onto you that you're this kind of ice queen, heartbreaker, but they just kind of don't get it. They just kind of don't get you. <laughs> because like you're so polarized in your femininity but you're also very like capable like not that femininity isn't capable but you're like capable in the in the material world and the masculine elements of your life like those are all taken care of and it's like how can you be with so much ease um so carefree and have everything you need but you're so just like without a care. Like there's this childlike, careless, youthful feminine energy to you. And they're like, how? They wanted to be the one to like bring that practicality into your life and take care of you. But I think it's this codependent cycle that they're trying to bring back around into your life. And you're like, yeah, no, thank you. Cause you had to realize that you can stand on your own two feet. Like you had to create that. Cause maybe in your past, you had this learned helplessness that you developed maybe from your upbringing, maybe from a bad relationship when you were young. And it's like, you're just getting out of those cycles. So you're like, no, thank you. If you're trying to come to me like, and provide for me and get me into this cycle or this dynamic of like, like a, being my knight in shining armor, no thank you. Like, I'm really enjoying my life. Like, you're welcome to come enjoy life with me um, and get to know each other in a healthy way. But I'm not gonna be swept off my feet. But they really wanna sweep you off your feet. Like, it, I'm, they're very, very attracted to you. But you're over it. Like, you're over that kind of, fairy tale perception of relationships. You're getting into your like mature grown woman kind of kind of vibe. And I love that for you. All right. Let's get an advice message. Whatever you have on your mind, on your heart, that you just want a little bit of unraveling for. You need a little 
bit of advice. Bring that to mind. What is the advice for my pile number threes? Wow, that came out really quickly. Spend gladly. Keep money flowing toward you. Your supply of money will dry up if you hoard what you have and are reluctant to part with it. Whenever you spend money, do so with a glad heart and the knowledge that more money will flow to you to take its place. Forgive. Whenever you're in conflict with someone, don't hold on to your feelings of anger or resentment. Send your love to that person and think of them with wholehearted love. This will open the door to reconciliation and forgiveness. Yeah, so I'm getting that. You're stepping into this state because it's like to get to that, enjoying that nine of pentacles energy, which is this energy of like really just enjoying your alone time, feeling capable, feeling abundant. There is some forgiveness of the past of those dynamics, of the people who may have had you in, in these states of learned helplessness, whatever you're carrying, um, forgiving it is, is the first step. And once you forgive, also don't keep yourself in this constricted state of feeling like you don't have enough. So I think sometimes maybe you try to show up as being more capable than you feel. You really are that capable. You're just as capable as the way that you're that you're trying to portray yourself, but you don't always feel that way. And what's important is to really allow yourself to be swept into the flow of handling your business, of, you know, put those bills on auto pay. Don't be afraid. Like, Put the savings money on auto pay, put the investment money on auto pay and know that you'll always have enough money for everything you want and everything you need. That's a, that's a big thing. And once you put the things on auto pay, then whatever's left over, you'll realize that you always have like what you want, what you need. And a big part of feeling confident, feeling abundant is being able to feel abundant in your own skin. So also being able to find true joy and true abundance and gratitude in the things that don't cost any money. And when it comes to health, wellness, and beauty, that has to do with eating healthy, eating whole foods. So maybe not going out to eat as much. You know, that's going to help you have money for the things that, the extra things that bring you joy, but it's also going to help you to be more naturally beautiful and joyful as it is. So that's my main message for you, pile number three. Continue to step into this independent energy because as you go through that process of feeling whole and secure on your own, you're going to be attracting so many uh, romantic options to you. You're going to be becoming more and more attractive. And it's also gonna give you the clarity and discernment to choose, but choose amongst those options uh, carefully and accurately. So that's the message for you, my pile number threes. Thank you so much for joining me today. Share a like, comment, let me know how it resonated with you and make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss out on any more content such as this. I'll see y'all next time. Bye.